Hello, Noah here with Bricker 101, the practical web security course that helps developers find security bugs. If you're interested in that sort of thing, check out Bricker101.com and learn more about our course and find out when the next course starts. Today we'll be talking about SQL injection in Active Record. Uh, this is a Ruby ORM that's used primarily in Rails, but you see it also in Sinatra or in other applications that need a database engine. If you talk to a lot of developers, they'll tell you that if you use an ORM or Active Record in particular, that you will not have to worry about SQL injection. And that's simply not true. Today I'm going to show you two ways how to do that. Then at the end of this video, I'll show you a resource that will show you a ton more. Before we get started, I'd like to show you two things really quickly. The first is Schneem's Active Record Preventing SQL Injection Attacks. This video will help you get up to speed with SQL injection if you're completely unfamiliar with it. And it focuses primarily on Active Record, which is the ORM we'll be using today. Schneems also has a ton of videos on Active Record. If you've never used it before, those would be worth checking out as well. Especially Active Record Where and Active Record Find. This project is also up on GitHub, which means you can download it, play around with it, fix the bugs that I show you today find other bugs as well and there's a simple readme and it should be pretty straightforward to set up let's get started so I spun up the Rails server in the production environment and you'll see why in a little bit but if you have ran the seats file correctly you should be able to log in using bill at example.com and capital M Microsoft for the password Okay, we've successfully logged in, and I see two options, quick transfer and help. In my mind, I like to go after the support infrastructure first. The primary reason for this is that support infrastructure oftentimes isn't given the same security consideration that critical infrastructure is, and so it's oftentimes easier to penetrate. And once you've penetrated that, that can help you penetrate the core infrastructure or the sexier stuff that people are really trying to protect. So let's get started with help. When I go here, I see that I can select multiple accounts and submit a request via this box here. And what I wanna do when I submit this is evaluate what is the appropriate response. How is the application supposed to work? Sometimes the application works in such a way that it crashes, and I wanna know that before I submit data that hopefully causes the application to crash. So if I go back and inspect the element, I see that there are three fields. And one of them appears to be a hidden field. And I love hidden fields. Hidden fields are funny because developers pretend like no one can ever put any junk data in there, any bad data, and they're just gonna sit there unmodified by the user. In most cases they are, but that doesn't mean that someone can't modify them. And so what I want to do is do something like this, and hopefully we'll see an error page. And we do. And so when I submit something like that, what I'm trying to do is prove to myself that the application is taking the user input that I'm providing and somehow inserting that into an SQL statement. One of the interesting things about Active Record in particular is that a lot of the finder methods, they map to where in some way. In fact, a lot of methods an active record map to where in some way, as you might imagine. And so, if that's the case, then if we think of this as a where clause, where, where what? Well, where one approach would be where ID equals three, for example. And if we do ID equals three here, just so we have a reference, and we look at this, and we compare brokerage account one 
savings account one, checking account one, two, brokerage account two, savings account three, checking account two, and the values are different, it appears that we're able, using active record, to evaluate the ID of anyone. So we could just iterate through the IDs and get a listing of all their accounts. You could even do where ID equals three and name equals whatever, and you could iterate through those names. And you'll see how to do that uh, from a blind SQL standpoint in a few minutes. So now that we've identified this, let's take a look at the code and see what's actually happening. The code, we are causing this line 11, user find by params user. And what's happening here in find by in Rails 4 is actually a where clause. It's mapped to where. So where, whatever we pass in there, is going to be executed. In general with active record, if anything is passed in as a string, it is very dangerous. With active record in general, when anything is passed in as a string, it's very dangerous. So you want to use parameterization, for example, or um, or use an array, or depending on the method, it depends. But here we could use parameterization to solve this problem. So what does the actual SQL queries look like? So what you see in the first case here is select users from users where users.id is equal to one. And that's parameterized correctly. But when you pass a string in there and it knows that you're not passing in the default ID or a, a hash or something else that it can say, I know how to parameterize this, it executes it as a string. All right, let's get started on the next attack. Quick transfer looks like a good place to start. I'm just going to enter a zero here, send it to Warren Buffett from my savings account. Transfer succeeded. That's pretty good. That's how it's supposed to work. Uh, savings account, we'll try Warren Buffett again. Only this time, let's try entering that string. One, single quote, one, dash, dash. And essentially what this dash, dash does is comments out the rest of the SQL query. So hopefully that'll cause it to crash. This is a Ruby application, so if we can try to imagine what the programmer is doing behind the scenes, perhaps they're calling 2i on that, and one, da one single quote one dash dash 2i equals zero. So perhaps it's not surprising that the application didn't crash. Maybe the programmer should add a validation there though to make sure that, that actually is a number. Let's try a different field. Okay, we received we're sorry, but something went wrong. This is a very good sign. This means that the to field, for whatever reason, it's not really clear right now, and it's hard to imagine why that to field is being used for, for something that's causing the app to crash. So if we put our thinking hats on again and try to imagine what could be going on there, this is where... In reality, you would have to do a lot of trial and error, but I'm going to give you guys some quick hints to get us moving along pretty quickly. So if we imagine it's a where clause, uh, and what we and we put something like that in, no user with that name exists. Seeing that and seeing a successful transfer. There's two flash messages that are being displayed. And I wonder if we go down one path, do we get one? And if we go down another path, we don't get the other one. And if that's true, that's usually represented by a true false. So if something, do this. If not that something, do this other thing. So if this user exists, then do this. So if it is in fact calling exist on this string, then we can probably get away with something like like that to close the to close whatever's actually happening there 
and then do something like this. That appeared to work. So if that works, then we should be able to do something like this. And essentially what we're saying is close it up or select one from users where name equals Warren Buffett, social security numbers equals 829, etc. And then have the double dash there. That worked. So the real test of this is does this work? We change this 8 to a 9. No, it doesn't. And so we've just proven that we can extract data from this application using this blind SQL attack. So what is Active Record doing? Let's take a look. If we look at line 10, it looks like a programmer decided to write a very primitive validation. There's obviously better ways to handle this in Rails, but this is the code we've been dealt. So exists, if you inspect the source code on it, you'll find that it actually does a few things. It checks to see if it's an array or a hash, and if so, it assumes that what's been passed in is a condition that needs to be passed on to the SQL engine. So what we're doing here is passing in an array with a condition inside of it that's just being passed along to the engine and not being sanitized, which is very different than the previous example we saw where we said that strings were dangerous and arrays were safe. Well, in this case, it's the opposite. And this is one of the few exceptions to that general principle that when you see strings in being passed to an ORM, you should be very afraid. Let's take a quick look at what the queries look like as they go into SQL. So the top query is what we would expect to see if we don't modify anything. Select one is one from users where ID equals three, limit one. The bottom query, however, you can see what we're doing. Select one is one from users where ID is blank. You can see where that second single quote paren is the start of our attack all the way to the end where we have the double dashes which mean ignore the rest of it so that we can close it on our own. What I've done is wrote an automated attack. So as you can see lines 11 through 19 log me in and set up the attack and then after that lines 21 through 37 allow me to attack the application by iterating through usernames and also social security numbers. And it's actually using uh, filling in the SQL needed for this attack to work. Let's see it in action. Here we can see that Bill Gates' social security number is figured out pretty quickly. If you let this continue to run, you'll find everyone else's as well. All right, that's all I have to show you today. But if you're interested in Active Record, SQL Injection, and Ruby on Rails, I'd encourage you to check out rails-sqli.org. There, you will find a lot of examples that show how, how to exploit other methods uh, found in Active Record. I also want to point you to the interactive version of this on GitHub where you can pull down this application and test it yourself. One thing that I did as I was learning about this that I found really useful is come into the gem file and move this PG gem up into development and replace SQLite 3 or, uh, or you can also use MySQL which I think is just MySQL 2 is the gem for that and then go into the config and your database.yaml file and change this adapter so that you can test these exploits against SQLite, MySQL, and Postgres. And you'll find that many of them work across all three, and with some modification, you can make others work too.
again, just a reminder to check out Breaker101.com if you've enjoyed this video. We are the only practical course that helps everyday web developers become security experts.